the next flow metric which is lead time and cycle time now this lead time and cycle time is of debated a lot both inside uh, the kanban world and outside the kanban world so we'll talk about it for a couple of minutes right so we are defining lead time as the time between an item is discovered until the time it is delivered so discovery meaning from the time the customer has brought it up and it has found a place on one of your boards somewhere till the time it is actually delivered in the hands of the customer and cycle time is basically defined as the time that has elapsed in the development cycle the point where the team actually gets involved to pick up the story and do the actual development work you can define that as a cycle time now the actual definitions of lead time and cycle time are different according to whichever method framework you use and there is a reason for that uh, kanban university uh, kanban courses focus on um, the time starting for lead time and for cycle time collection as the time the engineering team picks up the ticket whereas other frameworks they pick it up from the time the customer has placed the order so these are slight nuances between the various frameworks that we have out in the market but essentially they all talk about the same thing which is how much time has elapsed right so now how, what good what good is lead time and cycle time right so lead lead time is basically if you go by the popular industry definition right from the time the work item is discovered till the time the work item is delivered or released so it takes into account everything if you're waiting for someone to pick up your ticket wait if the ticket is waiting among other queues if some if this ticket is deprioritized something else is put up you know block because of internal dependency block because you're waiting on external team all of it is measured under one bucket called lead time and this is an excellent metric to make customer commitments so an average lead time customer commitment is pretty decent now okay if this is lead time then what is then what do i do with customer lead time right so before we go there let's look at the lead time in a slightly complex board this board was pretty simple to do sorry this board was pretty simple let's look at a slightly complex board here okay you have this yellow sticky that moves from the backlog it moves from the backlog to solutioning from solutioning to architecture review from there to proof of concept from there to ready for development then jumps to development doing development done validation doing validation done development deployment to uat um, you know product owner and customer sign off deployment to customer development environment right and on the right hand side what i've done is i've posted a small table that shows how long the ticket has spent in each phase so the ticket got created on day 1 it moved to solutioning on day 8 basically it waited in backlog for about 7 days then it moved to architectural review in day 11 ready for dev day 12 it moved to development doing on day 18 meaning it spent about 6 days waiting in ready for development and so on and so forth so it takes about 50 days for the ticket from the time a customer has requested it till the time it reaches the hands of the customer it takes about 50 days great now this was just one ticket that we discussed now if i were to look at all the stories and all the epics and all the features that were delivered in the past 60 days how would that look like So on the left hand side what I have done is I have basically made a, a fictional uh, dump for you. So you see story number 1 delivered in 25 days, story number 2 delivered in 50 days, 45, 65 so on and so forth. So all these stories have got delivered in the past x days. And what I've done is I've calculated the average. So I'm saying on an average the lead time is approximately 47 days. Seems fair enough, right? but there are a lot of tickets that take more than 47 days to get delivered yes you can see that right you can see there are some six tickets here that take more than 47 days to get delivered right but what if the ticket that you commit to the customer falls into that above average one right like if that's your luck where you get caught with the ticket that's going to take much more much longer than your average ticket right uh which period do you use as a reference period for your average calculation no we don't a good very good question right so um it depends uh, it depends on two factors one of them is uh, you're looking at an improvement time period for example you're saying this quarter is all i'm using for measurement 
that's great because if you want to show quarter on quarter improvement you could do that uh, if you are a team that has been practicing uh, this for a, from a long time you probably want to ignore the metrics that were there at the beginning of your cycle because you know you have evolved your process has become more stable so it doesn't make sense choose that period according to your choice what do you think would be best okay. now in a system like this if the customer asks you the question right when can i expect my feature what would your answer be you have an average of 47 days and the customer comes to you and says hey i have i just sent a ticket can you tell me how long it will take for you to deliver it for me what would your answer be so let's be approximately right instead of being exactly wrong you see i average is 47 days that is true uh, right so when do we usually complete x percentage of tickets where x is a high number so here we are always always remember that lead time is a post facto metric meaning that you can measure lead time only after you have completed the activity meaning only after the event has completed can you actually measure it right so when do we complete x percentage of tickets where x is a high number right so i usually take 90 percent as my benchmark so when do we complete usually complete 90 percent of the tickets so in the past we have delivered approximately 17 tickets so 90 percent of 17 is approximately 15 tickets so i arrange all these lead times in an ascending order and then i look at when do i deliver the 15th ticket so in this case my 15th ticket is 65 days so i am saying that i am 90 percent confident of delivering this ticket within 65 days remember that your average is still 47 days right so between 47 and 65 you have a gap of approximately 18 days right so if the customer wants more and more confidence if he says, you know, I, I want you to be 98% confident, I want you to be 95% confident, or if you want to be 100% confident, then you need to adjust the metric accordingly. And obviously, the more data points you have, the greater the confidence which is customer commitments can be made. Right? I've tried to simplify this as much as I could, right? There's obviously a little bit more nuance, a little bit more complexity that than that can be covered in a webinar please bear with me in case i have not been very explanatory that's well. right right so now let's come back to the cycle time right cycle time internally when do we measure it we measure it from the time the development team picks up the ticket and the time till they get done with it right they have they have validated it and they have pushed it into the uat environment or whatever is your criteria for definition of done for the development team so this in this one it exposes all your internal wait times. It shows where are your queues, it shows where are the dependencies. So this is a great way to build your processes. If you're looking at a very, very process focused transformation, then this is an excellent metric to start. Right, so you're now looking at, you know, within the development team, okay, uh, I'm waiting for three days for somebody to pick up the ticket and then he does his work or she does his work and then she passes it on to you know, um, a queue where it's waiting for another seven days and then the testing team picks it up and then, uh, you know, they spend two days understanding the ticket and then they spend three days testing the ticket and then they push it to a, uh, you know, a queue for deployment and then it waits there for 10, 10 days. All that is a very good uh, indicator of where you can process optimize within your teams, right? So same example that we have, right? So you can look in, within, in, within, development team right so ticket goes from development doing to validate to deployment to po and customer sign off and customer dev you can see how long it takes right? it takes approximately 35 days and in these 35 days the ticket is actually waiting for more than 31 days if you notice it so there is more weight than actual work that's happening on the board because the ticket is waiting for six days, then it's waiting for eight days, then it's waiting for five days, then it's waiting for eight days, and then another five days. Essentially, your your thir your thirty five days is nothing but four days of work and thirty one days of wait. Now, some of this you can do both. Data collection can be done both manually and automatically. Uh, if you're looking at automatically, yes, I'll show you an example that I have put in place. Uh, we'll see that in a minute, right? So now let's look at what would that look like, right? Now, what I have done in one of my previous organizations is 
um, I have basically implemented a cycle time heat map. Now I am not really talking about any tool here. Please understand that I want this to be a very tool agnostic session. We are not dependent on any tools. So in this case, you know, I have taken Jira work items and I essentially took a dump of the data and I basically built categories. I called, I basically said what would classify as an engineering cycle time, what would classify as a code review time, what would classify as a QA cycle time. And I went back and built a heat map. This is all on Excel sheet. Okay. From Jira, you download the data and then you can build all of these metrics on an Excel sheet. So now what we did was we went ahead and we told the uh, teams that we have established as an organization, code reviews should not take more than 48 hours to complete. So essentially that means approximately three days, not more than three working days, a ticket should stay in code review. And that became a driving metric for all the teams. So you can see before the transformation, how it was and after the transformation, how it moved. You can see a lot of them are in the greens. There are still a few reds, but yeah, that's essentially it. So you could build it. It's a very simple process. You can all do it on your own uh, Excel sheets. Uh, but if you do this, it gives you good visibility into what's happening. And we are just collecting the time the ticket has spent in a particular column. That's all. Okay. Another way to visualize your cycle time would be you can look at the cycle time trend chart. What is the uh, cycle? How is the cycle time going? So, for example, if if at all you're working in a team where there are tickets of varying sizes, like you know, and you're not able to like kind of stabilize, you can look at this cycle time trend chart to find out what exactly is happening here. For if if you're working with the items that are varying in sizes, your cycle time trend chart would not go down. It would be a very violent, uh, you know, a very erratic chart, and that should give you a good sense of what you're doing wrong. And if you are a team that has already established a process which is pretty uh, rock solid in terms of uh, 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 you know, cycle time collection and cycle time tracking, then this trend should technically be on a downward spiral because you're continuously making improvements and you're looking at the data and you're making uh, more changes. So essentially this. Now, how does lead time and cycle time help you, right? So lead time gives you a number or a predictability with respect to a customer demand item. There's a customer request and it gives you a, a, a fairly good sense of how do I make a commitment, right? And cycle time gives you a very good perspective on what are your internal processes and challenges, right? So we are getting closer to the value added uh, definition that we saw earlier in the slides, right? How am I adding value? Is all the time spent in adding value? that question is going to get answered slowly. 